Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and welcome to the second video in a series of game development tutorials on how to make your own 3D platform game in Unity 6. In this tutorial we'll be covering importing things into Unity, textures as well as materials. Remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload. Feel free to leave a comment and drop a like. I also have a Patreon page where you can help be a part of this channel, and you'll also find all the scripts and the assets to this series there too, along with plenty of other things. You can also now join as a free member. Now, on with the tutorial. So, when we import things into Unity, they become assets. They become an integral part of what we create in our game. To do that, we need to bring them into this window down here. However, this window really needs to be as tidy as possible. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a folder now where we can store all of our textures. So down here, right click, create folder, and we'll call it textures, and then head into that folder. So we need to bring in a multitude of textures now to start building our game. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to import these seven textures. And I will also leave a link in the pinned comment and in the description where you can go and download all of these textures completely free. One thing to note though, when you download them, you will need to unzip them before you try importing them into Unity. Unity will not let you import from a zipped file. So make sure you do unzip. Now we may not be using all of these textures, I just wanted to make roughly seven to give you a little bit more of a choice to play around with and you're free to use these textures however you want to. So how do we get these onto here and make them useful and make them appealing? Well, you can drag and drop. That's the beauty of a lot of things in Unity, you can just drag and drop. So for example, this blue texture, let's drag and drop onto the cube, perfect. Awesome. It's as simple as that, but there is a lot more complexity to it than just putting a texture onto a game object. Let me explain. If we click on this object itself, we've just put that texture on, we can see if we scroll down here that we now have a material component. Where's the texture? Well, this is it. Materials go on game objects and textures go on materials. Textures do not go on to game objects. So let's follow the process of what has happened here. This texture has created a material and that folder has been created here. And you can see that this material is what has been created. And this material is what is on this game object. So let's zoom into this game object. And while we're at it, let's turn that global volume off. So let's select the global volume if it is in the center there, because it's kind of in the way a little bit and just untick up here, disappeared. There we go, now we can see things a little better. So, what do we have here? Well, this particular material here, we can change. You'll notice a couple of settings over here in the inspector panel when you have the material selected. I'm not gonna go into absolutely everything. This is something you'll probably benefit most from by playing around with. For example, if we take the color we could change it and give it a bit more of a different tint, depending on what you wanted to do with it. If you wanted it really blue, you could do that to it. If you wanted it completely black, do that with it. However, if you keep it as completely white, it will display the original texture that you have. But you're not limited to just that. You can play around with some of these settings here, the metallic, the smooth. You can see how much it will change depending on what you have it set as. That's when you can change the source to be either metallic or albedo. And once you do that, give Unity a second just to redo that, and then you can change it again and see, play around with these settings and come up with one that you think you're happy with the most. So I'm gonna set it as that for now. You can select something called a normal map here. Now, what is a normal map? Well, a normal map is a way of making a 2D object have a bit more of a three-dimensional look. So in order to do that, we need to create a new type of texture. So if we go back to our textures right here and select the original blue floor, if we hold control and press D, it will create a duplicate of that texture. Now, because all these textures are based on the same effect, we just need one single normal map and it will work for every single texture. If you have different types of texture, 
Uh, for example, if this one is twisted or inverted or it looks a bit funny, you'll need a different normal map for that. So in this case, all we'll do is we'll have floor, we'll remove the 0, 1, 1 and have normal. So now this particular file is called floor normal. We now need to change the texture type. So if we go up here where it says texture type, where it says default, click it and then click on normal map. This will change the type of texture from being an image that goes into a material to being a normal map to give it that 3D bumpiness. We can also tick create from grayscale if you want to play around with this, but for now we will tick it. We'll leave it as 0.25 and then you just need to click on apply. And you'll notice that this changes. What we can do now is we can apply this normal map to this material on this object. So let's go to our materials folder. Let's re-click on floor 01, head back to our textures and then drag and drop this normal map into this little square here next to normal map. And you should see when it is rendered that the texture on here looks a little bit different. It gives it a bit more of a different vibe. And look at that. That's kind of cool. Awesome. What you can do is you can now play around with this normal map to make it more intense, less intense. I would say don't go wild with it and set it as 999. It might look a little bit odd unless you want to go for that. Uh, but what I would recommend is working with the zero and then changing it to maybe 0 0.5. See how that looks, change it to two. See how that looks, even change it to negative one to give it the inverted look. So for now, I'm going to leave it as negative one and see how we get on with this. Now, the way we created this material was easy, wasn't it? We just dragged and dropped. We can also create a material in a different way. We can manually create one, but you end up with the same effect. But let's try it anyway. Let's go to materials. Let's right click, create. And in this list again, you should be able to see uh, if I can find it myself. Uh, the material, which will be right under rendering. There we are, material. And you can call this my material, if I can spell. And this works the same way. So effectively, you would select your base map. In this case, if we select this little button next to it, we can select anything we want here. So let's go with the green one next and then click off that. And you could then drag and drop the green one onto there. So materials, like I say, are the ones that get attached to the objects themselves. And the textures are what goes onto the material. If you're unhappy with that, you can hold control, press Z and undo that. Alternatively, you can take a material like this one, hold control, press D to duplicate it. Let's rename it to floor 02 and then Let's put a different texture on here. So let's put the green texture on here. We don't need to change the normal map simply because the image of the normal map is the same for all of these textures. But what that does mean is that if we go to our material now, you can see floor one and floor two are identical because we duplicated it. We just have the different colored material on it. So if I take this cube here, this ground, hold control, press D, and if you keep hold of the control button and pull this out, you'll see it separates, it splits it apart, giving you a seamless kind of look. And what I want to illustrate now is that both of these materials have the green, material, the green texture on it. However, they look completely different in the big scheme of things. So it's worth playing around, you know, to get the image that you want to have on these materials. Uh, but again, it's entirely up to you and then you can just drag and drop these as you wish One thing you can do is if you select both of your materials You won't be able to change some options. However, you will be able to change some options that are identical For example, if we select floor, we've got the normal map as negative one If we select floor two, we also have the normal map as negative one So we can select both of those and change the normal map to negative 0.5, like so. However, if floor one was set as zero, select them both, 
you'll notice that if you change it, it will change the green one as well. It doesn't scale. So for example, if you wanted to change it by 0.5, you wouldn't be able to do that. You'd have to do it separately. So go to the green one and let's have that as 0.1. And let's change the blue to 0.1 as well. In fact, I want that negative. I, I like the uh, inverted way. There we go. So now at the moment, you can kind of see our level starting to take shape. And this is the reason why I wanted to kind of give you a lot more options in terms of textures, because they are very, very simple to create. So just watch how quickly we can create a lot of these materials now. OK, here we go. So let's take floor two. Hold control, press D. Hold control, press D. Hold control, press D. See how quick that was. Change it to floor three. Change it to floor four and change it to floor five. And then let's take floor three. Let's select different. So let's change it to orange. Floor four. Let's change it to um, dark red. And floor five. Let's change that to uh, pink. And there we go. That's how quick and simple it can be. So let's take this ground one. Hold control, press D, drag it out. Hold control, press D, drag it out. Hold control, press D, and drag it out. And now we can just drag and drop these on here like so. Perfect. So at this point, that's how quickly and easily we can start creating a level to play around in. Now, there are other ways of creating uh, a level and creating a world and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but for all intents and purposes, for what we're creating with this, we just need simple cubes because you can have thousands of cubes in a single level and it's not really going to affect your resources too much. Um, but overall, you know, for the simplicity of what we're doing here, you can go further once we're finished with this whole development thing. But you can see that this is starting to look a bit more like a game, like, well, Tetris a bit in this case. Anyway, next tutorial, what we're going to take a look at is prefabs, level design, as well as music, because those three things together really make up a good game. So by the end of the next tutorial, we'll have at least a portion of a level designed, we'll have some prefabs to make things quicker, and we'll also have some cool music to add to our level. So remember to subscribe and click that notification bell, and you can stay up to date with every tutorial I upload. See you next time.